right, everybody, welcome to a new tutorial. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Not going to go into the reasons why they're a little more difficult to do than speed art. That's why I kind of pumped those out like nothing. Um, but, you know, new tutorial. I want to show up on the screen now what we're going to be making. Alright, so now we're on the, you know, Photoshop screen. My uh, poster size is 5.7, 5.7, excuse me. <laughs> I'll just show you. This is my image size. It's typically what I use, 5 by 7.5. That's in inches. Um, you can go to pixels and it's 1500 by 2250. You know, it's a bit smaller poster, 300 resolution. That's just so if I want to print it later, I can. Go back to inches. Okay. Here's all the pictures we're going to be using. Of course, it's Daredevil, Spider Man from Far From Home, <gasps> and uh, the city background. And then we're going to use the Homecoming logo, but we're going to cut out Homecoming. Simple enough. Alrighty. So, first things first, let's get the, uh, the more difficult things out of the way. So, we're going to start with this cutting out Daredevil super like so this is something i do a lot now just because when you want to composite something together you gotta cut your subject out <laughs> if you want to put up in a different scene and scenario then that's what we do so as you can see it's a little bit grainy but what i really like about this picture and why i use it is because it's really lit well in that i can um kind of add light to him as you saw in the poster you can kind of create the, the world around him. All right, so instead of showing you me, you know, cutting him out all around the, the tedious stuff, um, I already did that. So it's right here, converted to a smart filter before I did it. If you wanna know how to convert something to a smart filter, smart, or, ah, smart object, you just right click on your layer and right here it says convert to smart object. object. Wow, <laughs> I am stumbling through this thing. So that way, if you wanna add, you know, layer effects um, you know, like things like image adjustments and all that on the actual layer without having to use a layer adjustment layer, <laughs> then you can, you know, change it as you want, you know, adjust it. Just another way to utilize the tools in Photoshop. So anyway, yeah, I already have him cut out. See, background's cut out. You, then he's gone, but so that way you don't have to see me do that whole process. I use the pin tool. Kind of went along everywhere. Same thing for Spider-Man. So we're going to transition into that. So you can see Spider-Man's already cut out. He's got his, uh, not, didn't do too good of a job here on the edges. But we are going to hide that with some, uh, some adjustments here. All right, now that you got the, the kind of difficult part out of the way, cutting out the subjects and whatnot, you can close that images we're using you get your background i use this one just because it looks it feels very daredevil-esque and i want it to be more in a daredevil environment as opposed to like a spider-man one the neon the kind of grungy new york street type of deal so, so i picked that one you can find this on pixabay.com search up like city and neon i think or just neon or one of the two i'm rambling size it to where you want it to be um obviously i want more of the neon signs in there so I put this one kind of in the back right here. And yeah, I mean, the Daredevil's legs are kind of cut off. So I'm gonna position them right around here and then later we're gonna size them the whole, both both of them up. But for now, we're leaving them here. And so Spider-Man, he's up, up front, up close and personal. Adjust them where you want them to. I like to always add depth to my, my posters so I'm going to add different, various blurs to each layer besides Daredevil because he's going to be the one that's in focus. All right, so let's start. Let's first adjust this uh, background layer. I'm going to convert it to a smart object. I'm going to go up to filter, camera raw filter. And we're just going to play the settings. I'm going to go with a much more contrast look. It's already pretty 
you know, edited pretty well. Excuse me, sorry. Awkward pause. But I wanted to be more like less. Um, I don't know. What I'm trying to say. So here we go, and then we're just gonna pump up the colors. Not that much, but right around here. And then I, I kind of added more pink, I believe. More pink in there, a little more blue, so that way it kind of makes those colors that are in the picture pop a little more. Okay. And that's pretty much done. We are gonna add, like I said, some uh, blur to it later, but we'll get to that when we get to it. So let's start with Daredevil here. He's, um, like I said, he's really well lit, so that's why I like the picture. I can adjust it how I want now. I don't have to play around with it too much. I don't have to worry about, I can't light certain spots. First thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna do another camera raw filter on him. Bump up the clarity. I'm gonna bring down the texture just because of how grainy it is. We don't go all the way down because then it gets super duper smooth. Negative 25, dehaze it a little bit. Uh, and then kind of adjust these tiny bit. There we go. Now he matches a little better with the background or you know, with the whole scene here. And then next, I'm going to do kind of the, the new, not new, but what I've done for a lot of posters. I'm going to go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And we're just going to kind of, but I'm not going to go crazy with it. 80s probably, and you might see it's like kind of grainy looking. We're gonna go up to filter again, noise, redo, reduce noise. I'm struggling with this on people. <laughs> All these bottom three settings, put them down to zero, leave strength at 10. Click okay. So I missed up. Uh, <laughs> I, want, I added an unsharp mask. I really didn't want to because it kind of makes it a little too grainy. So we're going to get rid of that. And it's going to make it a little blurry. But what we are going to do is we are going to add a curves to kind of blend it a little better with the environment. Adjust it. Because he is, you know, the light is behind him more. So he's kind of a little more in shadow. Hit OK. And here, and now we're gonna start adding the um, the kind of different lighting effects. I gave them more of a kind of a pinkish purple, and I think I just used pinkish purple on the highlights around them to give them that kind of glow. So what we're gonna do? We go up to here to this bottom part. It's the adjustment layers. This is clipping mask. Gonna, yeah, no mask. <laughs> we're not gonna do that. We we'll go with this one here. Click it. Go up to solid color, and then we're gonna pick like a pinkish purple kind of color good there's the number if you want to use that click OK now we're going to clip this to just the daredevil layer so hold alt on your keyboard click in between them there you go but now we want to change the color the color the I'm gonna change this <laughs> I'm bad at terminology don't bug me about it I'm gonna hit command or control if you're on a uh, PC uh, I and it's gonna invert this, the mask, and it's gonna make it all black. And so that way, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on the mask, zoom in, get a white brush, make sure it's got a soft edge. We're gonna bring the flow down to about, say 35. Size of the brush, and we're just gonna, we're gonna give them like that highlight, the color, And again, this is going to kind of be a tedious thing. So I'm just going to fast forward through all this. You can enjoy and follow along if you want. Alright, 
real quick, I'm gonna say, remember where your lighting is coming from? And always, if you're trying to recreate these, just always remember lighting and always remember where it is and why you're, you know, where you're gonna add the highlights, where you're gonna make sure that there's, the color is coming through. Otherwise, it's gonna look a little awkward. You'd be like, oh, why, why is light coming from this odd source? <laughs> so always remember, pay attention to that. And uh, like, so with these, you can see light coming from here, it's a little bit of light coming from there. And just a little bit down here, you don't wanna, I'm not gonna go crazy with it down in the bottom, just because it typically doesn't need it 100%. And that's just like the base highlight layer, which you want to add. And see these ones, you want to fix them to where they're not as uniform and they look a little too perfect, I guess is what I'm saying. They're like me, a little too perfect. That was a joke. Please do not take that seriously. <laughs> so you just want to make tiny little adjustments. Don't go crazy with it. And what I typically do I go to the layer, the color layer, and I go to the blend mode and I change it to overlay. And see, then you see you have a little bit of color in there. But what I also do is I duplicate the layer, Command or Control J on your keyboard, clip it to the image again, and then I change the blend mode to screen. And I bring the opacity down to 40, 50, I mean, like somewhere where you feel comfortable. If you want it all the way 100, Go for it. To me, it feels a little unnatural, so I like to bring it down. I'll go 45. It makes those colors a little more prominent. Yeah, so then what I do next, add another solid color. Um, the same color as this one, actually. I should have wrote down. I'm just going to copy this. So I remember. I don't remember. I mean, so I can just add it here. Command, Command or Control C, and then Command or Control V. It'll place the same color. I messed up and should have copied it over here, but I didn't. Same process. What we're gonna do with this one though, get a white brush. We're gonna make the brush really big. We're gonna bring down the flow even more to about, let's say 15. Pretty big brush. And then we're just gonna kind of paint around him a little bit to give him more of a, a, a glow from the lights. You saw in the poster, he looks a little more like, you know, those lights are a bit harsh. So this is probably is not going to turn out exactly like the poster I made, but you know, it's, it's along those lines. Uh, make sure, you know, don't go crazy with it. Change it to screen. You can take it or leave it however you want. I'm gonna leave that on there, add to a little bit. What I'm also going to do now, under the adjustment layers, I'm gonna to go to color balance and I'm going to, in the midtones, up the red and the pink, magenta, sorry, cyan, we're gonna to go more towards red, magenta, we're gonna to go towards magenta rather than green and bring up the blue a little bit. Oh, and see, it's affecting the entire image. What we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to this little icon here, I'm gonna clip it to just Daredevil. And you don't want to go too crazy with this, obviously. Play with it until you feel like it matches the environment. To me, right, there's some other things I got to adjust in here because it looks a little funky here. So then we're also going to go to the um, shadows. Did the same thing, not too much in the shadows. A little bit more blue in the shadow, though. And there we go. And so now I'm going to do... Is I'm going to take this layer I'm going to get rid of some of this pink in here all right so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add a little more adjustment layers to daredevil here kind of make him pop a little more he's kind of blended into the background we don't want that so i'm going to add another adjustment layer here exposure i don't know why it does that to me i'm gonna put the gamma leave the offset and we're gonna bring the exposure up just a tad here. I said a tad, that's actually quite a bit. <laughs> we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add shadows and kind of more highlights, but then like, you know, black and white. So we're gonna add another solid color. This one is going to be black. Again, invert that, get a brush. 
with the, the the shadows you don't want them to be too harsh so you bring the flow down to you know lower level and then kind of paint in the front of him here so that way like i said earlier the light is coming from behind him so you don't want it to uh, be too harsh in front of you like you want to leave some detail but not a lot just so we can see his face we'll leave that a little bit and you know play with this how you will i mean like, like what do you want to do Whoa. my bad <laughs> Uh, do what you want, you know, with this, obviously, if you want to leave them without any kind of highlights in front of them, totally fine. Like, this is just me showing you how I made this. Um, you can see kind of here in these spots, too, they're a little bit funny, just because with this one, the bigger uh, layer, I kind of just went crazy with it. So we can get some of that out of there. What we're also going to do is we're going to add some more highlights to it. Just above the shadow layer. You can rename these two if you want. Shadows. Difference. Um, you're gonna add a white solid color layer. Okay, and then you can add this to highlights. I typically don't name my layers that much. Sometimes I do, but usually I don't. And then you're gonna get a much, you bring the flow up of this one, and then you're gonna kinda go along the lines that you did with the uh, the pink color there um, and just painting where you know the lights coming in and hitting them so just a little bit here and there typically where you already see him kind of lit up and then with this layer you're going to change the blend mode to overlay so kind of basically heightens those those spots rather than just kind of having bright white marks on them <laughs> then you know you can go through get all the spots that you want I always pay attention to little details in this thing too So right here, I probably wouldn't have as much, typically because it's kind of hidden. There we go. I mean, adjust how you will. I mean, nothing set in stone with this, so. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a glow behind him now. So what we're gonna do is you can do the same thing that we've been doing. Add a solid color. Command V because I still got that color saved. Invert. Oops. And then white brush. Make sure it's pretty big. Bring down the flow. And you're just gonna paint in the areas where he's kind of got more pink on him. Much more harsh areas. It's typically on his shoulders, top of his head, so you really want to get get this one involved. And then from there, if you want, you can bring down the opacity so that way it's not as intense. Bring it down to you know, let's go 50%. Cool. So I'm not going to show you the same thing for Spider-Man. Same principles. Know where your light's coming from. Know where it's going to be shaded. And understanding that will be a lot easier for you. All right. So as you can see, I added the the colors to Spider-Man. I didn't add any shadow to him. We are going to do that with the curves adjustment. Um, but I did add some highlights. Of course, the pink color. And I added the you know color balance to kind of adjust because without it, he just looks like he doesn't belong in the environment. He sticks out way too much. So you add that color balance. And play around the scene. Here's what I use for the midtones. Negative 17, plus 3, plus 15. Shadows, negative 4s. Left the middle one. Plus 8 in the blue. Highlights. Didn't change anything. Didn't change anything. I said that really weird. 
<laughs> so, and then from here, of course I made it into a group. A lot easier when you do that with these things. You know, select all of your layers that you want in the group. Command or Control G, and it creates a group. We'll rename this one Daredevil. And then let's create Spider-Man's kind of glow behind him. We're gonna go to this top one. Oops. Same thing, adjustment layer, solid color, control V. And then we're going to bring it down. I didn't hit control V. I used a different kind of pink on these ones, so we'll just change this to what we're using now. That way we have some consistency. Again, with these ones, you're not trying to like put glow all over the place. You're just in the places where places where the light seems kind of to be really hitting you, hitting the the subject. So it's in the, kind of these areas here. Again, you can move down. This changes the screen to let's go 75 on his. And then what we're gonna do now with Spider-Man. Oh, and I also added a camera raw filter settings to him. Nothing too, well, I guess it is kind of drastic. I brought down the texture a lot just so it doesn't look so grainy. And it's gonna help when I do this next step. So those are the, the numbers you can pause it, whatever you gotta do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the, the blur to him. Go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. 20 is way too much. Obviously you go too much, it's just gonna look like that. Looks like a ghost. So we can go maybe 10. Let's try 12 actually. It's 12. Uh, no, it's a little too much. I like let's stay with 10. Again, you know, play with it how you want. Obviously, if you go too much, like I showed you, it's gonna look a little funny. Not enough. It's just gonna he's gonna be too sharp and he's gonna look the main focus of it. It's not what you want. So let's just enter 10. <laughs> Easier. And then what we're going to do now is, so I'm going to solo just these two layers, the Sp Spider-Man and Daredevil. I'm going to hide all these. I'm going to create a new layer. Oops. Leave this one, leave the glow on there. And then uh, in the new layer, it's empty. You're going to hold Command or Control, Alt, Shift, E. It's going to create a copy of every visible layer there is. So there you go. I mean, it's... And then what we're going to also do is we're going to duplicate the background. Move that over. Same thing, only it's just these are... Oops. Like that now. So I messed up, but make sure you, your subjects are sized the way you want. I'm going to adjust mine because I wanted Daredevil to be a little bit bigger. All right, so I made my adjustments. Made Daredevil a little bit bigger because, you know... Spider-Man is the big a little bit shorter, so I don't know. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add to the background layer another uh, blur. Go back up to filter, blur, guys. You, know, you can go to blur gallery and use field blur. Looks pretty good too, but it kind of takes a while to render. The background you don't want as um, blurred out as Spider-Man because you're kind of focused on Daredevil, so the background's gonna be it's a little bit more in focus. Let's go with seven, maybe. Hit okay, and of course, because we made it a smart object, we can go back and adjust it. If later on we feel like, ah, not looking how I want it to look. It's typically what happens to me. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, see this kind of, we're gonna adjust it now. <laughs> That's what all these are for here. The adjustment layers, sorry. Uh, the adjustment layers on top, just basically some gradients, the logos and whatnot. And then of course the adjustment layers. So let's do that. Let's close these actually. Oh, we need this. My bad. So we are going to first add that uh, gradient. We get a black in the foreground over here to this one you can hit G on the keyboard to select to make sure you're with the one 
that it goes to transparent and go up to basics and it's usually typically the middle one select it uh, make sure you go on uh, linear and then you go from the bottom up to to wherever you want it to be it's a little too much for me and then i duplicate it and then we'll see why in a bit bring the opacity on this one down to about 70. and then we are going to add the adjustment layers vibrance so we're gonna bring these up to really give it a nice heavy glow to kind of sell the, the neon in it Cur or almost said curves we are gonna add curves but for now we're in the exposure bring up the exposure this is where we're gonna add offset we're gonna kind of Bring it more to the, the brighter side. We're just going to, to wherever you like. This is kind of a, something I usually do with a lot of my posters. There, and then we are going to add a curved adjustment layer. Bring up the, the shadows again. Bring in the midtones, bring up the highlights. And in comparison to the the first poster I made, he, it's a little oversaturated here on this face. You can go back, make those adjustments. So you want out there, you can just select this layer, the, the characters, get vibrance. We're gonna clip it to that one, the layer only. Kind of bring down the saturation just a bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna Kind of do what we did earlier with the shadows and the highlights. I'm just going to kind of paint in sort of the flow in here in his face so that way the, the colors aren't so harsh in those areas. There we go. To me that looks okay. <laughs> Again, you can fix, you could have fixed that you know earlier. I, I should have, but I didn't really pay attention. So those are the adjust adjustment layers we're going to use. Um, now we're going to get the logo, bring it on over. If you have one that has a black background, um, you can use a screen blend mode. It'll work just fine. Let's get it here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the homecoming part. That's easy. You can use the pen tool. You can use the lasso. Uh, I just wouldn't use the magic wand. It's just not going to work. I use the lasso tool, polygon lasso tool. Hit L on the keyboard, just kind of make sure you don't cut out any of the Spider-Man part. It'll select it, hit backspace or delete, command or control D, will deselect it, and there you go, you don't have it anymore. Trademark, remember that. Please don't sue me. <laughs> and then now you're going to adjust it to where it's a little bit smaller, kind of in the corner over here. You can see this one is too much, I'm going to bring it down some. I do want it covering it a bit so that the way the logo is not too bright and that's pretty much it I mean that's the basics of creating this poster it's mainly you know making sure that you're when you cut out your subjects you're blending them into the environment I chose a very kind of vibrant and different environment than the two pictures were originally in well spider-man was kind of in a darker one but daredevils definitely was in a brighter well-lit room he's the darkest object in that picture so we'll bring that up again so you can see like he's really the standout in this this shot so to move him into a you know a more dark kind of scene you have to really pay attention like i said to the lighting to the shadows and adjust for that and that's exactly what i did and of course i added my logo down here won't show you that but I hope this was helpful. I hope you gave an understanding of what like the steps we like most of these kind of composite artists go through. It's really just kind of tedious work. I am using a mouse uh, to color in, to paint in all these lines. It's uh, a bit more kind of, you don't get as many precise lines as you would like, but it can be done. You know, don't, don't be like, oh, I don't have the same equipment. Y you don't need it. You can, you can work with what you got and definitely create something cool. Again, I will link um, 
the background image down below uh, these two images you can find just Google you know like Daredevil steals Spider. this is from far from home um, as you saw when he's in his uh, kind of he's tripping out <laughs> all right everybody I want to thank you for joining me for this tutorial you know you kind of watching the maybe the the voice thing I don't know what I'm going to put here, but thank you for joining me for the tutorial. I hope it was helpful. I hope you kind of got some tips and pointers. This is a really cool thing to do. You know, I really enjoy making these type of posters. Obviously, it's what a lot of, um, you know, the digital artists are doing now. Obviously, it's digital, but <laughs> so have fun with it. I mean, go crazy, create new environments, like put characters in different environments, put other characters around them. Just have a lot of fun. Go out there and create something really cool. Share with me if you if you want. You know, my, my tag and everything has been popping up all over the screen, I'm sure. At Jordan James B on Instagram, on Twitter, it's Jordan JB Designs. Um So yeah. Thank you for joining me. I've said this so many times. Uh, until the next one, peace. <laughs>